Hello everyone and welcome to the Gumpla Network. I'm the Spicer and today's unboxing of 2021's Full Mechanics Calamity Gundam comes to you courtesy of those fine folks over at Canadian Gundam. Canadian Gundam is your one-stop shop for all things Playmo and Gumpla here in North America. With a vast catalog that's restocked regularly and flat rate shipping to the US and Canada, if you live in North America, they've got you covered. When you're checking that vast catalog and placing your next order, don't forget to use the promo code GUMPLA NETWORK to save yourself 10% off. Being my first full mechanics kit, I don't have a lot to compare it to, but the box art is really nice looking. The Calamity is done in a really high res 3D model type situation versus the actual model kit, and I don't actually dislike that, I think it actually looks really cool. You have the designation, the Calamity Gundam, some information about it, and of course it being from the Full Mechanics line. The box art is really nice and I do kind of dig this style over like the model kit being on the front of the box, but I think it's really a personal preference. I've seen both look good. On the side of the box we have a good front and back shot of the kit. You have a bunch of the gimmicks in terms of articulation in the shoulders, the ankles, the waist. Then you have the cannons, the big beam cannon in the center of the chest, some of the detailing in the backpack, the thrusters on the shoulders, and the cannons on the shield. Overall, kind of impressed they're putting some of this stuff on here, because this for kind of a pseudo new 1100 no grade is pretty advanced, so good for them, and I hope this full mechanic line does continue to pick up steam, as they all seem to be pretty solid. The other side of the box is going to bring us some more of the gimmicks here, mostly the weapons themselves. You have the bazooka, the cannons, and a couple of poses. So you've got a kind of a flying pose. <laughs> it looks like since 2012 we've made progress and can put the adapter for the stand into the waist. You have a kneeling pose that looks a little bit more convincing. And then kind of a full burst mode with the shoulder cannons or the backpack cannons, the bazooka, and the shield cannons all kind of firing at once. And then of course you have all the warnings and all that nonsense. Once we crack the box open, we're treated to the plastic and the A-plate, as you would expect, is multicolored. The top gives us a dark hunter green, which looks nice and complements the teal quite well. We'll be seeing more of that a little bit later on. We do get a nice kind of gloss black just below that with the inner chest vents part popping out. So it is going to be layered unlike the 2012 high grade. I'm very excited to see that. Always love it when plastic gets layered. It just is such a nice effect. Most of the rest of the plate is yellow for the accent portions around the torso, the chest, and the head. You also have some of the teal, which is mostly going to be on other plates, but this is going to complement those same regions. Overall, everything here is uh, inspiring some great confidence in this kit. I like the concept of having a separation of a glossy black for the vents, while still having the kind of hunter green instead of making it all one color. The hunter green complements the teal a little bit better, and it helps the vents on the chest stand out a little bit more in that glossy black. A lot of thought went into that decision, and it looks really, really good. The B plates, B1 and B2, are going to make up a lot more of the teal, mostly down on the legs, the waist skirt, if you will, the skirt armor, and the head. Everything's looking really nice. This is a different shade of teal than what we had on the 2012 high grade, but I do like it. It's still really nice. It kind of gives a little bit more of a gray to slightly greenish tint, so it does play with that hunter green really, really well. C1 and C2 are actually different colors and make up different parts of the kit, but they're C1 and C2 for whatever reason. C1 is in the teal and looks to make up probably the thighs, a couple of little accent portions, and the back of at least one of the cannons. Um, that could also be a different part. Maybe it's the backpack itself. Not 100% sure, but I'm sure I'm going to figure it out once I put it together. C2 is going to be a gray, which makes up just some of the other random bits here. It looks like the top of the feet, the bottom of the torso, the faceplate, and the back of the backpack that had all the mechanical detailing that was pointed out on the side. So a wash or some kind of weathering there is probably going to make that pop 
quite a bit more. We move on over to D1 and D2, and these are molded mostly in that, or entirely in that hunter green color. And this would make up what was the black on the 2012 high grade. So you get a little bit more color variation. The hues with this and the teal play much better together and offer a little bit more color separation and really make the chest fins pop a little bit more. But overall, it looks good. You have some decent surface detailing here and there, but they don't really go too crazy. And with a color like this, black panel lining marker will stand out, but it's not going to pop nearly as much as uh, on the teal or anything like that. As we move over to E1 and E2, these are pretty much all of the inner frame and the gray pieces. And yeah, I, there's not much to say as far as the inner frame, but it is cool that it is two separate pieces and seems to be fairly elaborate. Of course, it is just kind of like a large high grade in terms of its complexity, but you do get these swivel hip joints, which is really cool to see. And uh, yeah, everything looks like it's going to work pretty well here. I'm not really concerned or anything of that nature. We move over to F1 and F2. This looks to be some of the shouldering units and the big portion of the back cannons. And they do look to have some nice surface detailing. Not sure if we'll have to put any paint or stickers on those, but at least with the panel lining uh, marker, I could probably do a fair bit of work to make those pop just a little bit more. As we move over to G1 and G2, we're treated to pretty much the entirety of the bazooka, which is a slightly more gunmetal gray color. It's very nice looking. It's, uh, it's a little different. I'm glad it's not just like a flat gray or a flat black or anything like that. It is going to be several different pieces as well. And uh, hopefully the barrel of the bazooka is going to be a different color as well, since that is how the line art is drawn. G2 is mostly red, which is going to make up the chest cannon, the shoulder cannons, the jewel, and I think some of the underlying eye portions for the face. Very cool that all of this is on its own plate. No stickers here. I'm really excited to see how this fits together. And then we come around to H1 and H2, and these make up the rest of the teal, which is the back portion of the cannons, the top portion of the shields, and kind of the rest of the little bits that are left over. Some nice surface detailing there on the back of the cannons. The shield being in multiple layers in different colors is really refreshing to see here and really gives me hope I'm not going to see any color correcting stickers here in the next few portions. And we don't actually have a lot of color correcting stickers. It's really nice to see. You have the clear piece for the eyes as well, but you have the eye sticker, two camera stickers, and one foil red sticker that I'm not entirely sure what it's going to go to. So I guess we'll see, but hopefully it's nothing major. It's only one, so I'm imagining it's some kind of camera. Oh, I think it's the camera for the bazooka. That would make sense. So yeah, all of this is cameras. There's no color correcting stickers. That's really cool to see. And then you get a very nice sizable sheet of sticker decals, and these look really nice. These remind me of the old school, like the 2012 high grade decal stickers, but just more advanced, almost kind of closer to along the lines of a master grade, but you get the Omni logos, you get the X131 Calamity designation stickers, you get, I think, total of six, too big, four small. You get all weapon stickers, which is nice. I always love it when they include a sticker that has the weapon's name on it, especially for seed, because they go out of their way to usually pick German names to throw on these weapons. Um... But it's cool they're there, then you have a bunch of warning stickers and some more Omni stuff and just a bunch of other markings, but I always like seeing this. Any kind of sticker sheet like this, especially for a high grade, would be really nice, but I'll take it on a full mechanics. There's more space, these stickers are more sizable, and they'll be much more noticeable on something of this scale. As we get to the manual, it uh, is a manual. <laughs> I always feel weird talking about manuals because there's just really not a lot to say, but... You have the nice box art from the front. Once again, it's really nice looking. Uh, I've pretty much already said that. There's the painting guide if you do decide to paint it. It uh, is a little bit more varied than you'd expect, but it looks really good in terms of its color combination. And then there's the rest of the back. You get some lore on the Calamity. You get some more of the posing stuff that we had seen on the side of the box and some of the other gimmicks. And there's no color splash pages here, so I don't have anything internally to show you other than just the regular manual portions. 
overall, with this being my first full mechanics, I'm really excited to jump into it and just see what this is about. All of the stickers, uh, as far as the decals, the limited number of color correcting stickers, which is effectively none, and just the variety of plastics we're getting in here has me really excited to jump into this and totally makes sense why people were saying, hey, this is actually really good. Everything I've seen in the box leads me to believe that, but I still have to build it, so I guess we'll see once I get it done. If you have any questions, do drop them down in the comments below. I will do my absolute best to answer them. And as always, friends, I've been the Spicer here for the Gunpla Network. Please stay safe and keep on building.